Hey, good morning, family. Pastor Artie here with your men and coffee. I had to stop to get coffee because I'm headed over to the Tyler Mall to go take my walk this morning. Uh, it's raining here in SoCal, which it hardly ever does, so it's kind of a nice change. But I wanted to talk to you guys about the power over sin. You know, we always use the excuse, you know, and I've heard many, many, many pastors and churches and always teach this, you know, thank you God for a day that I wasn't promised. What a bunch of hooey. Because what you're doing is you're putting yourself back into a, um, the realm of sin again. You're, 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 worth, you're worthless. <clears throat> but you know, in Christ, we're worthy always. He's made us worthy because of the death of his son on the cross. Go with me to Romans chapter 6. I know for a lot of you guys who have been in the Lord long enough, Romans 6 is an amazing chapter. But let's read it, shall we? It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? I got to turn the page, guys. Hold on. It's not cooperating. <laughs> it says, Knowing ye not, that so many of us were baptized unto Jesus, were baptized unto his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by the baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For we have been play, planted together in the likeness of his death, and, and shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, and that the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve sin. For if he that is dead is free from sin, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall live with him knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But he that liveth, liveth unto God. And we're going to stop right there. I'm going to do a two-parter because I'm going to go on from here uh, tomorrow. But I want to talk about something. You know, knowing that Christ died already, it says, you know, if we say that we shall continue in sin with that grace should abound, God forbid we shouldn't. It doesn't. You know, and this old line saying, well, you know, I'm just a human, I'm going to sin, blah, 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 blah. You know what? You've already made up your mind that you want to sin. You've made a conscious choice to sin. See, a true believer doesn't make a conscious choice to sin. He makes a conscious choice to serve the Lord to live according to his word. Knowing that ye may have many of us that were baptized unto Jesus were baptized unto his death. You know, when you went under the water, you were signifying that you were being buried to the old man, the sin nature, and that when you rose again, you were rising up in newness of life. That's why in 2 Corinthians, he tells us you are a new creation. You know, you've been delivered. You know, and there's all kinds of scriptures that, that can support this. And, and I would expect you to be a good Berean and look them up. Find the supporting scriptures to, to Romans 6. There's a ton if you just look. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism. There it goes again. You're going under. You're being buried. You know, you can't get any more buried than going underwater. And like Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. So see, God gives you the ability to go down and die for your sins and then raise you up in newness of life because he already took care of everything through his son. It's been done. Jesus said, it is finished. Look that one up. It's finished. What does finish mean to you? That it's going to continue on, it's going to perpetuate itself, it's going to keep on going? That you're always going to be a sinner? No. I hate that when I hear people pray that. Forgive me, Lord, for I've sinned. No, you wanted to sin, and you sinned 
because of your sin nature, because you made a conscious choice to sin. True born-again believers don't want to sin, and they fight it. They walk away from it as much as possible. You know, I can only think about yesterday or day before I posted this picture of this, this huge guy on a bike. I've never seen a bigger man in my life sitting on a Harley, and I made a derogatory statement willfully. I knew what I was saying, but you know what? I, I was insensitive. I was insensitive to the people that may be overweight themselves. And that wasn't a slam against them. You know, I remember myself, I used to be 299 pounds, one pound shy of 300. I was a massive tank and I was killing myself. I was killing this body that God blessed me with. And I made a conscious choice not to continue eating, but to continue to get better. Today I weigh around 200 pounds. I've lost over 100 pounds. So it can be done, but that was my choice. See, we got to stop doing that. So if I have offended you by that post, please forgive me. I, I didn't mean to. You know, I love you guys. And, and I know that, you know, we all suffer addictions. I do. You do. We all do. We all have addictions. My biggest addiction, coffee. <laughs> I love caffeine. So it says, For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Guess what? When you come out of the water, what? You were raised up. You were set up on high. You were taken out of the water. God knows what you needed. You needed to be born again. You need to be one of his children. God, can't you rejoice with me in the fact that God has made you a new creation? You're not the same old person. You're not that old sinning so-and-so. You've been set up in newness of life. So live it. Live like Christ. You may not be able to do it all the time, but you don't have to willfully sin. You're going to slip, yes, but man, try not to. God doesn't want you to live in sin. He wants you to live in his righteousness. The glory of his righteousness. Come on, guys. How amazing is that? It says, Knowing this, that the old man was crucified with him, the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. There it goes again. A conscious decision. You have to make a conscious choice today that you are going to fight the battle of sin. Satan is going to come after you with both barrels blowing out because he wants you to slip up and go stupid on God and sin. I don't know about you, but I think I'm a little more, I think I'm a little smarter than Satan. You know, Satan's just an angel. Everybody thinks he's like a God. He's not a God. He was a created being by God that sinned and lives in that and tries to take as many of you with him. Stop it. We live in new, we're a new creation. I'm going to keep on pounding. I'm going to keep on hammering it till you guys get it. You're a new creation. For he that died is free from sin. Praise God. When we were buried under the water, we came up and we were freed from that nature, that conscious nature of sin. We were freed from it. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Yes, that's right. When I leave here, I'm going to live with him in heaven. He said, I go to prepare a mansion. If it were not so, I would not tell you this. You know, God's word is true. It's yes and amen. There's no gray area. He doesn't say, well, maybe. He never says that. <clears throat> Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. You can't die twice. You can only die once. It's appointed once for man to die, and then the judgment, the, uh, the word tells us. So only once you can die. Death has no more dominion over him. Christ is free from the dominion of death. He's already died. You, in your baptism and resurrection from the water, you are only going to pass from life to eternal life. Death doesn't have a place in your life. Yes, this body's going to die, but your spirit is going to move on. Praise God for that. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, and in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. And I'm going to stop there because we're going to go on from there tomorrow. But 
he died unto sin once. How many times can you do something? How many times can you do something new? Once. How many times can you sin? Once. Once you start sinning, you continue. But you start by sinning once. What can you do once? You know, unlike today, you know, there's multiple marriages. You should have only gotten married once. You know, family, we do a whole lot of things that are contradictory to this word. And one of them I see the most is giving in to the sin nature and the conscious of willing sinfulness. You know, it's often been said from the pulpit, and I've heard pastors say this, you all got to stop your stinking thinking. You do. Your conscience is going to kill you. But you know what? When your life is given to Christ, you are a new creation. No longer are things there. They're passed away and all things have become new. So live as that new creation. Don't let sin drag you down today. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace today. Linda and I are praying for you. The rest of the staff, we lift you up. We hope you have a blessed day today. I'm going to go in and I'm going to go take my walk because i got about three or four miles to do today. And I love you guys. Change your stinking thinking. Let God have control. And like I said, on some of my posts, if I offend you guys, I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. And I'll try not to do it anymore. See, those are conscious thoughts. So I got to consciously think, you know, what, what are people looking at and what do they see? May you have a blessed day and we'll talk to you real soon. I'm gonna, I got to go walk in. It's already starting to rain harder. Anyway, I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Woohoo! Bye-bye, guys.